I'm so nervous. Like, it's not okay. Like, I don't know why I'm nervous because they're just like normal people, you know? They're just people, that, but they just happen to, you know, to work for High Rise, you know, the game that basically, while wow, this is really sappy, that basically changed my life. So I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, they're, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, they're ready. Wait, I'm so, oh, okay, I'm scared. Okay, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. I'm nervous. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Ari, and welcome back to Raise Your Voice. And this is episode nine. It is the second to last episode of the series, which is really bittersweet to say, but um, I promise this episode is really going to be worth it because I'm super excited for it, so I bet you guys might be pretty excited for it as well. Uh, it's been a month since my last episode, I know, okay? It's been a really long time, and uh, there's a good reason for it. You see the, the names on the screen right now. I'm joined by three very special guests, and it took a month to plan this. It just... It was, a, it was a long planning process, and I think it's gonna be really worth it. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like unbelievably nervous right now. If you saw like from what I was talking about earlier, you can tell how nervous I am, but um, today I am joined by, like I said, three very, very special guests, and if you guys would like to introduce yourselves real quick. Then... Uh, so, I'm Anna. I go by Alka on High Rise. Um, I've been with High Rise for about five years, since like late 2015, and I'm currently the art manager. So in addition to making some of the art, I also am in charge of managing a production schedule, assigning tasks, and coordinating with our community manager and my operations team. And I am Anne, and my username on High Rise is Anne Man. Uh, I'm a game artist for High Rise. Uh, I've been there for over three years, like three and a half, I think. And um, yeah, I just make a lot of the art, the grabs, the rooms, um, some of like the new product projects, uh, all kinds of different things. And I'm Joanna. I'm the newest artist on the art team. I've been with you guys for about two years now. My name is Lambie Art and Game. And I'm also responsible like Anne for uh, clothing, rooms, that kind of I want to say thanks for having us on the show because I think we're really excited too. I'm excited too! Oh my gosh, I'm sure like the community is probably like, because I didn't really like, uh, what's it called? I didn't really mention this to anyone. Like I never really told anyone that I'm doing this, other than like close friends. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be kind of a shock. You're gonna be surprised. <laughs> yeah, I'm really <laughs> excited so to see the reaction. So the way this is gonna work is that I have a bunch of questions uh, coming from me and also some people the, from the community. Uh, a few weeks ago, I joined a bunch of art chats, and I mean like like a bunch, like like six or seven. <laughs> and I was just like, "Hey, do you guys have any questions? If if you were to talk to a high rise staff artist, that, that was so like not obvious at all." But then I basically just compiled a bunch of questions that people were asking. And the first category that we'll start with is uh, your guys's art before high rise. So I guess I'll just jump right into it. So I really want to know also coming here like as an artist how and when did you start like pursuing art as a career because i know when i was little i always wanted to pursue art as a career but i never really knew where to start or where like where to look or uh, i can start i guess uh well i i definitely have always been creative and always interested in art and thinking about it as a career uh and i think i kind of started with more of a graphic design background in like high school and college. And it wasn't until like the end of college that I really got into doing animation and illustration and discovered that it was a really interesting way to put all of my creative passions together. And so I actually went to grad school for um, like concept art and for game art. And that's when I got a lot of like hands-on training in making art for games um and then uh yeah i found the job at high rise and it's kind of been history since then but yeah i think like being a young person today you have tons of resources and uh creative influences out there that you can use to find uh 
inspiration from. And I think that's really cool. It's something that like, I didn't even know about game art as a job until I was in college really. So just like now people are aware of it and they can start studying it earlier. So that that's really cool. I think it, it the more you like immerse yourself in that world, the more you learn about it and the more uh, creative you can become. Hearing it, like you saying, like you didn't really know about it until college, that kind of reminded me that like one of my old art teachers used to say like, oh, when I was young, no one ever like gave me resources on how to be, like how to pursue art as a career. And I think it's just, I really like this day and age, like this generation, because everyone's so exposed to like all these new forms of art and all these like new careers that you can take. I think it's really, really nice that you guys are kind of opening up a world for high rise players as well to, you know, express themselves and, you know, discover the world of game art. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I think there's so many creative young people out there now. It's it's really awesome. I'm kind of same. I have always wanted to be an artist, even when I was a kid. Um, when I was in like junior high and high school, I was really active in online art communities. So, you know, like DeviantArt and stuff like that. And um, I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't have any specific idea of what I would do as an artist, like how to be an artist as a job. I took this summer art class. And one of the teachers was an, illust was an illustrator, basically had, um, and that's kind of how I found out about illustration and all the things you can do with illustration. So he was, he had said that he had worked in advertising, he had done um, like clothing design and just, I, I liked the idea of just like having a broad range of career choices, I guess, within illustration. So um, I ended up going to art school to study illustration and animation because I always really loved cartoons and it just, yeah, I liked the idea that illustration was like a broad skill set I could apply to a lot of things. Um, I don't remember how exactly that ended up going into um, like game art, but I guess they're kind of related. So um, yeah, but I, I definitely agree with Anne. We had resources back then, but not nearly the same level of resources available now. So um, like that's, it's really amazing to see a lot of young artists that are like largely self-taught and like teaching other people things. So. Being on DeviantArt and stuff, that's honestly kind of where I started to learn like all this digital art stuff. I learned everything from the internet, which was really crazy. I never took like an art class until two years ago. That was my, my first one. It's just really crazy. Like technology has evolved so much where we can like literally access everything and create anything that we want. And yeah, you're really lucky. I mean, like nowadays it's so easy to things and be you know have access to a lot of different programs um i was in high school and coming into college like photoshop and illustrator were just like newer tools mm -hmm. and so it's been really interesting to see how the art field has changed really pushed technology forward now i'm kind of, this is one of my questions i kind of want to know if you guys were working on any major projects before high rise like were you guys like possibly doing any game art before, before high rise, or was this like your first kind of experience? Um, I had worked at another like really tiny game company before high rise. Um, so we had made a couple of games. Um, I think one of them was like a Happy Tree Friends game. So we partnered. I don't know if people still remember what that is, but oh we gosh, had partnered with you know, <laughs> that um, that makes Happy Tree Friends and. I like made like a mobile game for them and um we had also made another game that was like um kind of like a like a candy crush style game but based on poker so um so yeah i was doing a lot of like animation and character design and painting for both those projects uh, high rise was my first job after grad school and i think i was really lucky that it was like a really great opportunity and worked out and wanted it was something that i wanted to stay at but um yeah, before High Rise, I, I wasn't doing any full-time game work. I had just finished school, and in school, I was focusing on uh, like live-action character design and prop design. So it was a, yeah, a pretty different style. It was more like I my project was a, a Tim Burton style Alice in Wonderland adult movie, very different from High Rise, but 
Uh, before this, I was working with an online animation company. Uh, they launched a Kickstarter, and I was doing a lot of concept and background designs for the animation shots. Yeah, Alka said, like, Happy Tree Friends. Does anyone remember that? That was like my childhood. That was my terrifying childhood. <laughs> Happy Tree Friends. <laughs> I remember I used totally. to be so disturbed by it. But anyway. I think uh, definitely animation as kids, like, has influenced a lot of our, like, choices. Mm -hmm. Growing up, you know, your parents or whoever don't know how to tell you, like, that is an actual job you can get in. We were kind of on our own trying to figure out how to get into this field. I feel like a lot of our generation coming in like, yes, we can do this. Let's do art stuff. <laughs> so kind of speaking about cartoons, um, I wanted to know how difficult was it to adapt to the high-rise art style at first? Because I've seen your guys' like personal art or I'm like, it's so drastically different from like the cartoonish, like, uh, I don't want to say anime. That's not right. That's not the right word. Like game style that high-rise has. So I really wanted to know if you guys had like any difficulty transitioning to that or like was it something that you had to like adapt over time or something that was taught to you at first? So I think my experience is going to be a little bit different than um, Anne and Joanna's because um, when I first joined, art style was uh, pretty different. It was way simpler um, and pretty much established by one of the other artists. So. Um, yeah, I had to learn how to mimic, uh, like, his art style, but um, my personal art style was a lot more, like, detailed and painterly, so it kind of leaked into our art style. So uh, our current, I would say our current art style is kind of a mix of all of our styles, but it's <laughs> built on a loose foundation of my art style and uh, Draxo's art style. I think one thing is that we do actually have a lot of, like, similar but slightly different styles in the game so you can see different influences of each of us in different items which is kind of cool but yeah it, it did take me a little bit of time to pick up on some of the standards or like the way that we make things um but then i think also each artist you can kind of tell their work because we all work slightly differently and have a different drawing style yeah I agree to that. Like, it took me a while to get into the style. The style was very different from my personal style. And I know that over time I've looked back at some of my older items and been like, oh my gosh, it's changed so much. It's yeah, if I look at my first few sets, they look really different. It's funny, <laughs> but it just, it kind of takes time. So I like the way that someone else draws something. We'll try to incorporate that into the next thing we make. So it's always changing, but we do try to stay within kind of a, a general bound of what it looks like. Kind of funny that you guys said like the style is changing because I've personally always had like a strong like not desire like I've always had a strong liking for a lot of the older items because they're so much more simpler and like you can tell they're old items. I don't know why and I, I never really thought about it that it, it could get like so much more detailed and complicated over time and now that I think about it I might look at like the evolution of all the items ever and see a difference because I never really noticed it. But. One interesting thing is that with the new uh, high-rise update we've increased the resolution so like oh, on the art yes. team we've all been kind of <laughs> able to add more detail which uh, yeah I think there's something very appealing about the simplified old items but it, we just have technical ability now to add detail and we definitely have been using it. I would say a reason why a lot of the old stuff is much simpler is because of technical limitations. Mm -hmm. Just like the low resolution, it like things will read more clearly if it's just simpler. It reminds me of like all like the old uh what's it called? The old like Snoopy items where it's just like there's like one shirt that's like red and then one shirt that's like yellow and brown, just like Charlie Brown and stuff. But they're so cute. Like they're so simple but they're like cute <laughs> it just reminds me of that and then like i look at items now and i'm like oh my gosh like all the sparkles and all the glitter and like all the like uh just like small details that you couldn't really catch at first glance like it's crazy that it evolved from that you know uh my next question is i think this is from a player but i'm not i forgot who <laughs> did you say that drawing for high rise has like expanded your skills technically or created or creativity create nope technically or, or creativity create Creative, creatively or creatively because uh, 
I think people kind of want to know if like Hi-Rise has improved your art style in any way or if it has like changed anything about how you go about art nowadays. Um, I'll say yes, it absolutely has. Uh, like I said earlier, when I was in grad school, I was focusing on a very different style of like super realistic and maybe more adult type drawings or like grungy gritty stuff and a high rise is like super cute and pretty um so it was a huge shift but i really think it's influenced me in like an awesome way and made my stuff just all that more better if that makes sense mm -hmm. um and like i love the way that my art has been changed by working at high rise and i think i've gained a lot of like new interests and I, I've gotten so much better at drawing people and drawing clothes and fashion and um, I'm really inspired by fashion now and I think that, that working at High Rise has really affected like who I am as an artist. Yeah, I can agree to that. My style like outside of High Rise is very early and High Rise art style is very simplified so I had to basically learn be very clean and simplified in creating artwork, which is not a bad thing. It's actually really great. It gets you kind of back down to basic. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, same about the, the fashion, um, like the, the fashion influences just uh, like I've learned so much about clothing construction and just fashion trends and um, yeah, like really trying to be very um, like deliberate about the way that I make shape and put down shadows and choose colors. The funny thing about Hires is that like when I started, I was just like a just like the simple artist. Like I didn't I had like only traditional materials and I was just like drawing commissions for fun and stuff. And I look back at my old art and compare it to my new art and I'm just like, what the heck happened? I think part of the reason why I personally improved as well, even though I'm not I'm obviously not like a Hires artist, but like like seeing all the items and stuff and being able to draw people's outfits based on like your guys's items and stuff it really helped me like step outside my comfort zone because i used to just be drawing like anime chicks all day like <laughs> but it's just like it really improved my art mm -hmm. style just like being able to draw things that i wouldn't normally do you know and also i agree it helped me with my fashion in real life actually because like I look at all these clothes on high-rise and I'm just like, wait, these match really well together. And I'm like, I want to replicate that in real life. Uh, as like a little follow-up question with that, do you guys ever find the time to create like personal art? Because I can imagine it takes quite a bit of time to make all these like events and items. Uh, sadly, not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I have like projects started here and there, but uh, yeah, I haven't really been able to get back to them and finish anything. Yeah, I think I'm in that boat as well as, you know, when you're working every day on the same, like, art field and then you, like, it doesn't feel like fun, I guess, <laughs> but I'm trying to get past that. It gets hard when you do spend all day making art and then you get off work and to find inspiration, it's, it's definitely hard to feel like you want to make more art, even though that's what we love to do. Um, so yeah, I try to do personal projects, but it's, it's challenging. And I think actually lately I've been doing a lot of 3D work. Um, and I think the reason that I've gotten so into making 3D art is because it's so different from what I do at High Rise that I don't feel like I'm just working uh, a longer work day. So yeah, I think the way that I do it is to try to do projects that are really different from what I'm doing uh, for High Rise. It's funny that you mentioned like the it gets kind of tiring because I love art like it's art is everything to me but I always contemplated like do I really want to do this in the future like as a there's a police siren outside I've always contemplated like do I want to do art in the future because I've always felt like if I had to do art to like keep the bills paid and stuff I wouldn't see it as like a fun thing anymore like I've always thought like if I had to do art all the time, I, I wouldn't see it as a hobby, even though I've I would love to see it as purely a hobby. And so that's always something I struggled with internally when it came to like, do I want to do art in the future? And now I ended up not choosing art as my future, which is really sad to say. But like, it's something that I always struggled with for a long time. And 
now that like I hear you guys talking about your experiences, I definitely feel kind of like, I feel like uh, it's very relatable to me. Yeah, I think sometimes turning your hobby or your passion into your job is not, not always the best choice because you do lose that spark, that joy that brings you, which I don't think is the case for me. I, I still love making art, but it's definitely something that, that people should consider when they're thinking about what they want to do as a career. And just, it's hard to be an artist full time. So, you know, it maybe it's something that you do on the side and uh, that's how you fulfill yourself creatively. Yeah. The good thing about art though, especially like for high rise is when you're making a set or picking items, you can still have that joy of like, oh, I get to make this item or it's basically making your own fun out of the project is always what I try to do, like pick cute and fun items that I would want to see or you still get that little bit of joy, but it does become, there are times that it's really tough to like out of that and it not feel like a job and tired. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I definitely agree with that. Like, um, you know, sometimes you get an assignment that like, you know, some, some assignments are more fun than others. And even within assignments that aren't as fun, um, you know, you, you need to find something in that that is enjoyable. So, um, you know, for me, like, I really enjoy like the vectoring process or I really enjoy making hair and just like the kind of like the actual rendering part of that. So. So yeah, you know, it, it it is work, but I am still getting enjoyment out of it. So nice to hear. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Very reassuring to me personally. Moving on, I guess we should talk about you guys actually being like on the art team. So first of all, I think, I mean, you guys kind of already briefly explained this, but how did you guys start working for Harry's? Like, how did you end up like discovering it? So um, I applied to a job posting on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it was a very, very small startup at that time. Um, I think High Rise hadn't even re been released in the US yet, so I had no way of actually playing the game. Um, all I had to go off of was the website. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I applied, I interviewed, did a bunch of art tests, and then I got hired. Yeah, it was a little bit similar for me, uh, except that I think my job posting was on Indeed, or it, it wasn't Craigslist. They graduated <laughs> to an actual job yeah. form. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, same thing, applied and interviewed. I was like fresh out of grad school and applying to a lot of game art jobs, and it's the same process for most of them. You, If you get your foot in the door, then you do an art test, and if they like your art test, then you go to the next step, which is like an interview and getting hired. My experience has been very similar. Um, I saw an open on LinkedIn, applied for it, um, did an art test, and then I didn't hear back for quite a while. Oh. It turns out the company had moved to a different location and I had applied during that time. So they were all busy moving. But after they got settled in, they contacted me, I got hired. That was great. <laughs> Now I want to know how many artists were on the team when you guys joined? Um, <laughs> one other artist. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then when I joined, it was just Anna and Draxo, who was that other artist. Yeah. When I joined, I'm the last artist that added in, and so everybody was there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, when you guys said small team, you meant small team. You yes. meant like a small team, like less than a classroom size. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes, it was so, tiny. Oh my gosh. Um, I think our whole company is small. no more than like 30 people. Yeah, that's what I heard too. That's very surprising. <laughs> So yeah. now I'm kind of curious, uh, are there any like special criteria that you guys had to fulfill before you got to work for High Rise? Um, I, I, oh, go ahead. Okay, uh, well, I guess, like, you know, part of the job uh, application process is doing uh, an art test. So um, the, the test has changed over time, but um, like this is pretty standard practice for a lot of uh, studios is to give you a test related to what your job is going to be so they can kind of like see um, 
they can see whether or not you actually would be a good fit for the job and kind of like a good way for you to see what kind of work you would be doing. Um, but outside of that, um, you know, like kind of just like looking at your portfolio, seeing if there's work in there that makes sense with either like the art style of the game or the types of things that like, I guess in the case of high rise, um, like, you know, looking at portfolios to see if there's character design or costume design or like prop design and, um, you know, seeing if there's any sort of interest in fashion and pop culture. Um, but yeah, and then the, the art test is also like a test of kind of the technical side. So making sure that, um, you know, you know how to use the tools or would be able to figure out how to use the tools that we use to make our work. I think the very first step is you should have a portfolio and we would look at that to determine, um, yeah, if you've done stuff in the style or similar to us and, and then we would give an art test. So basically like portfolio is like the number one thing to have, I'm going to guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. I didn't include this in the list, but I'm kind of curious, has there like, how many applications do you guys like get if any like how many people do you end up like turning down before you find like the one you know oh gosh um <laughs> i i don't know if i have a good number for that uh it's definitely a lot <laughs> um but part of i think part of that is um you know we you get a lot of applications and then you have to look through to see like who actually has the portfolio or who has relevant work experience. Um, so that already kind of um, cuts out a lot of people. Uh, but I don't know, Anne, do you remember the last time? Yeah, and I can't remember exactly. Off the top of my head, I would say we had somewhere in like the hundreds of mm -hmm. applicants. And yeah. then we narrowed it down to maybe like 30 to 50 that we gave art tests to, maybe maybe fewer, maybe like 20, so. Like 20 to 30 art tests, yeah. And then I think from there, I think maybe we did like five interviews, five to 10 interviews. Yeah. And then we hired Joanna and two other artists. So yeah, that it was a competitive process. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I did not expect that lo that number to be so large. Like, okay, but that means you guys are like extra special because you guys made it. Oh, so uh, my next question is: if, uh, everyone's full time, or are like, are there people who just kind of chime in from time to time to help to help out, or is just everyone like having the same amount of work to do? We're all full time, full time in house. Oh my goodness. So um, in house meaning that we're we're all full time employees of High Rise. So I want to know how work is kind of divided amongst everyone. Like, do you guys get to decide like who does what together, or are you guys like, I don't know how to explain this? Like, do you guys separate it based on like things that you're good at, or does like everyone have to have like the same amount of skill set? You know, if that makes sense. Um. So. <laughs> uh, so um, everyone does have more or less the same skill set. Um, the way that we have work divided is into sets, so like grabs, rewards, uh, room and furniture collection, item collection, uh, event UI, and each set is done by one person. Oh. Um, so, so yeah, one person has, so yeah, when you see a grab, that's all one person's work. Wow. Um, so yeah, everyone can do more or less the same thing, but um, obviously everyone has their own strengths and interests. So um, uh, I'm the person who assigns tasks. So uh, I try to give people a chance to work on things that they would enjoy <laughs> where possible. Um, so, uh, I, and then also um, I try to make it so not everyone, so everyone gets to work on different things. So. Um, not everyone, uh, so like every event, it's different people making the grabs versus the rewards versus the room. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we all have different strengths. So some people are really good at making rooms. Um, 
Anne and Joanna both are really good at runes. Uh, some people work really fast. Um, some people are better with fashion. Some people are better with more fantasy or abstract sort of concepts. Um, some people are really good at cute things. So, um, so yeah. Uh, but um, you know, I you uh, sometimes I do try to assign things to people where maybe they're not as strong, so they can learn and build up that skill. That's thoughtful because I understand like if you're creating like the same thing each and every time it could get tiring so that's pretty nice to hear and i think we all have things that we like to do a lot but none of us are super picky so it kind of we just leave it up to anna or we just say give me whatever and it usually works out so from the from what i've kind of learned so far you guys make sets like you said like the grabs and rewards and then the room stuff is that right mm -hmm. okay do you guys also create the things that are related to like more gameplay stuff like the event bubbles you know like the things that like you tap to event right and also like the grab banners the things behind like you know the grab that's pretty self-explanatory or like the promotion posts and ads and stuff do you guys also do that um, so we do make the event bubbles and icons um we make the banners and we make most of the event related posts um Renee makes the rest of the high-rise posts, so things like uh, Room of the Day and um, like a lot of the kind of like questions and games. Uh, we have a separate marketing team that makes the out of high-rise. Hmm. I literally just recently learned that Re Renee makes like all the social media stuff, like the the Room of the Day and stuff. I didn't, I completely didn't know that. I was like, the art team makes that because it's kind of like related to art. And then she told me, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> anyway. Now that we're kind of getting into like event process stuff uh how long i mean i'm pretty sure you guys already answered this in some like frequently asked question thing or something like that but how long does it take to create like grabs an event in general or like how early do you guys start planning before something's released um so it takes about a week to make a grab so that's from initial reference and uh, like research and reference gathering to actually like being in the game with a grab banner and ready to be released to you guys, um, plus or minus a day or so. Um, some some sets, are like a some sets take more time. So like a like a room and the furniture collection that goes with the room can take like one and a half to two weeks, depending on how complex it is or how many items there are. Um, and then some sets will take less time. So like um, some of the event rewards are not as many items, so that takes less time. Um, but, uh, for planning, um, so we do have, like, a, a rough calendar of events scheduled out, um, actually, like, into November at this point. Uh, so it's, like, we have an idea of what event types, uh, to plan for and, like, when they're plan like, when we plan to release them. Um, but for specific event themes, for specific events, uh, that's usually planned like one and a half to two and a half months. Sometimes when we're brainstorming, we'll actually come up with something that will make that's like better suited for an event like later in the year. So, um, so you kind of like, for example, um, we already know what event type and themes we're working on for an event at the end of August right now, and we actually came up with that idea back in February. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, we do plan pretty far in advance. Um, the actual like production, like when we actually start making stuff, that's um, like about a month to two weeks before they actually go out to the game. I'm kind of curious, how do you guys like uh, pick what kind of themes that you want to make? Like, is it based on like community at all, or is it just like, oh, we haven't done this in a, <laughs> in a long time, so let's just do it? I don't know. How does it work? Um, I'll I'll jump in. We like, we all talk about it together. Every two weeks we have a planning meeting and um, it's very open to anyone that has an idea. And Renee also contributes a lot of ideas. So we, yeah, we try to pick things that we think the community would be interested in and things that we're interested in. Um, and we also have like a, a Slack channel where we talk about ideas and just post them out there. So anyone can like contribute to that. And then in the meetings, we'll sort of like list our top ideas or anything that we've uh, come up with recently. And 
just decide what we think is strong and maybe flesh them out a little bit more. So if we have a general theme for an event, then we kind of try to figure out what the grab sets would be or what kind of items we want to make and talk about things that we think are going to be popular with the players. So my next question is when you guys are making items, this is from one of my friends, but uh, when you guys are making items, how much like artistic liberty do you get to have? Like, do you get the general prompt of like, make a formal outfit or do you get like specific things that you ha like have to make like make a long sparkly dress you know or like can you like come up with like anything you know we um, have oh go ahead oh, oh no go ahead joanna um we have kind of a list of like what we need to have like how many common epic rare legendary and we're kind of allowed to fill in whatever items we want um most we try to do is make sure that that we don't have too many of like we have shirts not like shirts in one grab so we try to limit that but for the most part it's pretty open-ended for us so we pick the items and we show the rest of the art team is in and things change from it goes into that we have a lot of creative freedom to do whatever we want and sometimes it'll be sort of specific like this is a pink puppy grab <laughs> um, or it could just be, this is a pastel, anything you want, and you can kind of pick. Um, if you want to narrow that theme down to, to be pink puppies, then you can do pink puppies, or you can narrow it to be like uh, blue clouds or something. So as long as like it fits within the event, then you can kind of have freedom to be creative. I was, okay, wait, now I'm thinking about this. If I got this right, is the process of like, like getting items through do you guys like come up with the ideas and then make concept art and then show it and then get that approved and then like work on the finalized thing is that how it works yeah pretty much um okay. a lot of times we'll pull references that way people you know like the art team kind of has an idea in the direction that we're gonna go then we'll concept it out and then we show the concept and everybody can kind of give feedback and so that way we know we're going in a solid direction yeah, some of the artists um, like putting together mood boards so everyone has a good idea of what direction they're going in. We usually try to post stuff like that to the rest of the artists so that we can get feedback and work as a team to say, like, I don't think this is uh, working or I think you should add more stuff like this and get help from each other about what will be successful in the game. My next question kind of related to this is, are there any things that you guys like try to avoid when uh, designing items like do you guys have to like put a limit to how intricate something can be or are there any limits when it comes to copyright because i remember like when i saw like the kind of disney themed event the other month other month like the other yeah the other month i was just like wait i didn't know they could make like disney items <laughs> like is there any limits to that or do you guys just like go all out and just do whatever you know um i guess uh so there's like technical limitations for our system. So like, you know, we need to make sure something works within our layering system. So the way that it actually layers on the avatar and will animate. Um, and then like, especially with HR1, like we had to uh, deal with the lower resolution in the game compared to our actual working files. So um, we always avoided really tiny details and small text um, outlines. Um, uh, one thing that I try to avoid is just text in general, if I can help it, because um, when we make, when we actually make the art, the avatar is facing forward to the right, um, and then from the backside it's just facing to the left. So in the game, when your avatar turns, it actually just is mirrored. So, um, so yeah, like, personally it bothers me when the text is mirrored. So I just avoid putting actual text where I can. Um, but for copyright, um, so we do actually, we do try to avoid copyrighted stuff as much as we can, but we'll take artistic liberties with the interpretation and like kind of use it as inspiration. So like the Disney event, we tried really hard to not actually make the Disney items, but like we know that the community has really wanted Disney stuff for a while. So, um, so yeah, it was like definitely like inspired by um, <laughs> the the like the copyrighted thing. 
Um, yeah, it's I, not a Disney event. It's a fairy tale event. Yes, <laughs> it's a princess event. <laughs> yeah, it's a princess event. All the clothing, like, you can see that it definitely has a resemblance to the original. It can give you the Disney-inspired item, but we can't, you know, step on Disney's toes or anything. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, my next question is uh, if there's ever been like challenges creating certain events or items like do you recall any like specific times where it was like difficult to create something that you actually had to create or how did you end up like pushing through it and you know eventually making the item well i will say that i like i'm not a perfect artist and uh there are items that are really hard to draw and sometimes I will be assigned something that I really struggle with and I have to find a lot of references and try to figure out how to make it look as good as I can. So uh, yeah, I'll just say that that still happens to me even though I've been working this job for three years. Um, like certain things in perspective are really challenging, certain like effects are really difficult to get right or materials. Um, and yeah, it just happens. It's like the first, the first like set that comes to mind when I think about like something that might have been like super difficult to create is that one like moon goddess, like I don't even know where it's from because it came out before I was even on the game. Is it like a grab? I guess I don't know. But I, all the details on that, I bet it was just like, <laughs> and that's not like the only complicated item there is in the game. But like I can imagine. It was yeah, I think sometimes we bring. The, our own like troubles on ourselves like i know i really like to do hollow like the designs but it oh, takes yeah. a while yeah. and it you know you have to change it to make it look right because it doesn't always look how you want it to look and um i know that we've had other artists that have done like sparkles or done glitter and just see them like two days later like why did i choose glitter why <laughs> did i do this myself so we have those days for sure <laughs> I bet it's like rewarding because it's pretty in the end so sometimes yeah. we are our toughest critics like I will be working on something forever and I'm just like I hate the way this looks like I'm really bad at with animals and I can't draw them but I think they actually look better than I think they do yeah I'll agree to that I, I definitely feel like we're probably our critic, and uh that's part of the good thing of having the art team there to be like no this looks great or you know just fix this little thing and it'll be great so we're very uh, supportive of each other Community, I would say, is generally positive. Uh, I, I know it's not always that way, but <laughs> like it's it's great to see people enjoying what we put out there on the app. Yeah. And there's always someone who likes it. You know, like our community <laughs> is big enough, so you yeah. can find that one person that loves it, and it makes you feel fulfilled. <laughs> like I said, not all the time. <laughs> like yeah, that's definitely true. There's times on hires where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I love this community. Like I love everyone. I love all my followers and I love all my friends. But then there's sometimes where I'm just like, I want to quit. I want to quit. I want to quit. Like I just want to get off. Like it's okay. It's kind of like a like family where you're like, I love you guys, but like I also hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most accurate thing. Ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> true facts. So oh, my next question is um, if you guys have ever made anything that you wish like made the cut but didn't because I remember like uh, it was this like series like a, a few months ago I think maybe yeah I think a few months ago where you guys like showed off items that like didn't make the cut or something like that are there any items where like in mind that are just like I wish this made it but it didn't you know we have that pretty often just because when we do our concept we always try to make a couple extra items in case the rest of the team's like i don't think this is going to work as well and usually there's like one or two items that you're like limited because of the number you produce so it's like oh this hat would be really cute but you know i want to stick to like 15 items this grab so it didn't cut so it happens fairly often yeah, but we usually like it, it's in a situation where we pick the top 12 out of 15 items so it's not usually an item that like we're really sad we don't get to make <laughs> this next question like so many people wanted to know do you guys ever get to like keep the items that you design or um so we do get to have the items added to our inventory um if we want them um but we usually, well, usually those items are just for us. We don't sell them or trade them or anything. I honestly don't do that that often because I think 
it, I get more enjoyment from seeing other people interact and wear the items. And for me, like I like to dress up my avatar, um, but I think since we work with the items all day long on our own computers, it's, um, it's not as much of a desire or like a coveting that goes on. Yeah. Yeah, I agree to that. Like, I think I get more enjoyment seeing like, outfits players make using the items than I do actually like my avatar with the items. Uh, the players are way better at making outfits than I am. <laughs> yeah. True yeah. story. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, occasionally uh, you might make something that you really like. So, like, my avatar has been wearing a poppy crown for the longest time because I made that grab and I just really liked the way it turned out. Yeah, same. I think I have, like, a My Little Pony in my hand and it's, like, my favorite item, so it's probably always going to be on my avatar. <laughs> For next topic is going to be about grab contests first of all let's talk about the history of like grab design contests so like when and how did they start um so the first grab design contest was for halloween 2015. Ooh. um yeah <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think that we, we've actually been doing it that long um so at the time we were working on a big halloween release so um i think some of our uh like long time players might remember we did like a Halloween maze event a long time ago um, and a lot of the items are still in the, the store um, but uh, yeah um, I think like Anton and um, yeah like Anton had decided that we would hold a costume contest um, and uh, back then uh, this was before Hi-Rise had a news feed so a lot of players would make uh, high rise specific Instagram accounts and post stuff there. So we hosted the contest on Instagram. Um, so yeah, like even back then, people were always drawing stuff they wanted to see in the game. So I guess like costume contest made sense. <laughs> I did. I didn't even know that about that contest. Same. I'm learning as well as everybody else here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to like dig deep into our Slack archives to find out what that was. <laughs> I always thought that it started like in 20, like 17. I don't know why. <laughs> like, because I think the earliest one I, I found was like 2017 or 2018 or something like that. So, uh, so I, I, I think probably, I don't remember when we first started doing them, um, like kind of the way that they work now, um, where we actually like pick finalists and people vote on them. I really don't remember when we started doing that. The, the first, like the contest way back then were just the the company, like all like five of us at the time or something, just looking at Instagram posts and picking out ones that we liked. <laughs> yeah, we've it's gotten more formalized, I think, w which is good. Um, and yeah, I think that the contests are awesome as a way of exchanging creativity and ideas with the players and getting like you guys to have a strong voice in the game. It definitely is because I think especially because there's so many like new artists that are on high rise now like I can't even like like there's a lot like I'm not even joking like I joined in 2018 and there wasn't like that many artists like there was a lot but like it was still a small community and now comparing it today comparing it to today or like there are like at least thousands and thousands of artists now and it's really crazy and even like non-artists are really like interested in entering these grab contests and it's really really cool that you guys are doing it so we really appreciate it and yeah i think it's cool yeah i think in the time that i've been there we get so many more entries now and the entries are really really amazing and the quality is just great and we're not judging on quality like so it doesn't really matter, but it's just, it's really cool to see how much work people put into it and how passionate they are about it. So it's awesome. Yeah. And it's also fun to see how the community reacts to it. Like how other players are like, oh my gosh, that would be an amazing item. Or I love the theme. Or so I want to know if player made items are easier to create because it's like based from a design already, or is it just as complex to make like normal items? Um, I would say they're, they're just as hard to make as normal items. Um, like having a design available does save time on research and 
some concepting, but um, a lot of the times we still do have to interpret the design and make it work within the system and work in our style. Um, and uh, honestly, <laughs> some of the some of the player designs are way more detailed <laughs> than some of the stuff that we make, so that also adds extra time. Yeah, that's why I included this question because I've seen like so many, <laughs> so many designs that are just like so detailed and like enough that people have to like do zoom ins and stuff of them to like even be able to see it. Yeah, I mean we also have to like take this artist style and make it fit the game. So they might have these amazing items. Well, this doesn't. This isn't the same style. So we have to kind of rework a little bit. Get Is that why, like, you guys kind of ask everyone to kind of uh, use the bases and stuff? Because, like, so I know some people like still draw like items in their style. Is like that the main reason why? Yeah, it helps a lot for us to know how the items are going to fit. You know, in them. Um, and sometimes too, like, you'll see somebody draw the whole like avatar in style and it looks really cute on their avatar but when you put it into the game's avatar it doesn't have that arm so using that does help a lot for us to see say that you don't have to use the base at all and that if you want to do your own style then we totally promote that too and like just understand that it's going to potentially look different or we might have to change some parts of it so um I know the, the following questions are kind of already answered in like the FAQ, but I know like some people don't look at that, but I, I know they should because it's very important when you're making grout design. So listeners, if you're listening, please look at the FAQ for like all the answers to your questions about this stuff, but you know, I'll answer it here, I guess. So um, can you guys describe some reasons that grab designs might get rejected because some people don't really understand <laughs> sometimes? Um, yeah, so I, I guess, um, you know, Feel free to jump in, but I guess I'll start. Um, so I would say like one of the biggest reasons why something will get like not selected for finals is that there's not enough items. Um, and part of that is that there are a lot, they might have like the right number of items, but the items that they've actually designed don't fit within our system. So, um, you know, kind of examples where someone might make a pair of socks and a pair of shoes as two separate things, where we can't actually do that. Those have to be combined into one thing or like rolled into another thing. So that affects your item count. So yeah, I would say that's kind of the biggest one. Um, another reason would be, uh, you know, some of the items are just too simple or basic. Um, and there's not really clear legendaries or epics or like just a range of rarities in the set. Um, um, and then also, uh, kind of, you know, we touched upon this just now, but like the, someone might have really strong artwork, but like their design is not really broadly appealing or if translated into our art style, it wouldn't be as appealing. So, um, yeah, like there are some, some artists on high that have amazing painting styles and drawing styles, but just if we convert that into our style, it just doesn't work, unfortunately. Items that, if items can get like disqualified because they're too basic, can it also go like the other way? If items are too like elite looking, can they also, you know, have an effect on you know, being a finalist? Um, I guess so. Yeah, if something is like way too crazy detailed, or if it's um, yeah, if, if something is like way too crazy detailed and it wouldn't really like look good in the game we might not, like we may not pick that person um also uh you know if someone includes items in their set that are like really obvious repurposings or recolors of existing items especially high value items we're less likely to pick that one so um you know uh unless it actually makes sense with the set though so you know i know like a really valuable item might be snoop feet or like a bubblegum mouth and just including that for no real reason um, is a signal to us that you might be including this in your set because you want this item, not because it works with the design. I think that kind of includes staying on theme. We have a lot of times that we get entries that are amazing, but they don't quite fit the theme that we've put out. Yeah, I would, I would say like, it's not so much about us 
rejecting people. It's more we just are looking for people who took the theme and did the best they could with it. So if we just think it's not representative of the theme, then it's probably not going to be in our top picks. So on the other hand, uh, what are some ways that grab designs can stand out and even get into the final vote? Like, what are you guys looking for for every grab design contest? Um, yeah, again, just I think that people that like represent the theme and maybe take it to a different level creatively if they put like a cool twist on it or if we see it in a way that, that not everybody else has done. Um, and then somebody who has like a really uh, well thought out design, you don't have to be the best artist, but if it's something that we think is appealing and that our players will want and is trendy, then we, we like to see that. Yeah, I agree to that. Like definitely if it's fun, trendy items. And a lot of times we do look at how the community is responding. The goal is to make stuff that the players will like funny thing about that mm. there's like there's always been this kind of like not controversy but it's always been kind of like a thing between artists where they're like oh they only they only mm. pick the designs that have like a bajillion likes and stuff like that do you guys have anything to like say or to respond to that like is it really truly based on like i know obviously it's not truly based on like the amount of likes but like how can you explain like the the factor that oh the community likes it i don't know how to explain it thank you <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to like yeah. make a question out of it but like yeah well i i would say first of all we don't really look at that like first at all and in general we we only look at it i would say if we're sure about something we're like well what what does the community think like are, is this really popular most of the conversation we we don't even know we take screenshots of the design that doesn't show anything like likes or repost or comments so most of the time that we're thinking about it we don't know and um it's not until maybe we're like looking for one more finalist or we're trying to decide between two people and that we would even like consider it um so it's something that like we don't completely ignore but it's not our first priority when we're picking things because i know a lot of people are like yeah, they only pick like the people that get on the top of Explore and I'm just like, I don't think that's true because especially with our like last Pride uh, contest, like I do <laughs> most of the designs are definitely were not like the top Explore people, which is kind of nice to see. Yeah, we spend a long time going through as all the posts and try to be really thorough and find everything and then for the most part when we look at it, it we don't see anything about the popularity. When it comes to like grab designs, uh, do you know if there's any like specific moderation for like art thieves and tracers and like unoriginal content? Like, are there any like invisible penalties for like people who steal or trace, etc.? Do you guys like pick up on that or? Um, yeah, that is actually one way to get straight out rejected is if we know that you've <laughs> not used original artwork. Yeah, yeah. we have, yeah we have that happen fairly often, or we have somebody that sends in the same entry basically from the previous contest We're like okay we've already seen this so this is i'm out i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get into the topic that i'm sure many listeners are probably expecting um but about this like art theft stuff that has been happening in the past like week or so uh this will be our next topic for this episode but um for listeners who weren't like caught up on this drama the, i don't want to call it drama that's so dumb but for listeners who weren't caught up on this situation from the past week or so recently like mm. high rise in general and like the art team in general has been brought into this like scandal where like where some players were accusing you guys of stealing ideas from players and then profiting off of it without permission so that's gonna be a hefty topic but from what i've seen so far there have been like multiple accusations uh, very popular accusations uh, from this year, uh, especially the top 10 judge like Pastel got there, which was debunked and that was crazy to me that like, like it just was such a big like coincidence, not big, like it was just like a crazy coincidence, but there's also like the recent ones of like the cyber goth dreadlock stuff and the baby pigtails and the pride flag binders, etc. So I guess my first question about this is how did you guys feel about this all at first not good that's for sure <laughs> i mean it's pretty painful to have somebody be like you stole my, my idea or you stole this and uh, i was actually one of the artists that had the past bow hair 
a thing happen and it's like I pulled from a reference that obviously the same artist used and it's it's not a great feeling and you know you see the community really pushing you know how dare they you know how dare they do this to us and it's like it honestly it's it's a coincidence we don't steal from you guys we love you guys so it's just kind of painful to to see you know your players and your friends not be happy with you <laughs> yeah it's first of all it has been really a big issue in the last couple of weeks but it's also an ongoing issue and so it's something that is frustrating for us that we've been dealing with for a long time um and it's sad to be accused of art theft and we just want to say that like we are artists you guys are artists and we love the artists on our community and so we all are sort of have something in common and we would not feel comfortable stealing from you obviously and we don't do that and um it, it's very uh it's it's something that we feel really strongly about is like being um authentic and and having integrity as artists um and so to be accused of it is unfortunate and we just want to say that we we want to represent you guys the best way we can and we would never steal from you so if if that if you think that's happening then we want to like investigate it but uh it's we can assure you that there's something that we haven't done yeah like um honestly the last couple of weeks have been very stressful and frustrating and um and yeah, it's, it's like Anne said, this is actually something that we've been dealing with um, for a while. It does come up every few months and it's been happening for years at this point, I think. Um, and yeah, like it's, it's not a great feeling to be accused of something that you know you didn't do. And um, speaking as someone who has actually had their art stolen, um, like I understand how painful that is on the other side. But it's also just, like just as terrible a feeling of knowing you didn't do something and having people constantly like very angrily accusing you and not believing you. Yeah, I definitely feel for you guys because um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that my art has ever been stolen, so I can't really like completely understand. But I, I've seen the comments, you know, I've seen the messages that people have sent to not only you guys but just like hires in general i've seen like i've seen a lot of it and i personally think like you can you can like criticize people without you know being so hurtful and like i'm like i believe you guys i definitely believe that there's no way you guys have stolen anything because like you guys are just like us you know like you said but i hate that hires can be a community where you know one person jumps on something and then everyone just keeps on adding on to the fire and it really sucks it really sucks because like ideally i high rise has always been like that positive community where everyone like lifts each other up and like everyone supports each other and during these times where like it, it's people just see high rise as like players versus staff players versus high rise staff i mean high rise artists it just really sucks to see and i feel really bad for you guys obviously yeah, I think, well, we definitely appreciate the support and we know that not everybody, in fact, I think the majority of people understand the, the complexities of it and um, sympathize. Uh, and like, we do want to protect artists and we don't want art theft on the app. And we do feel that if you think your art is being stolen, whether it's by a high rise artist or by another player, um, then you have the right to speak out about it or contact support or have us um, investigate it. And we will try to make sure that you're protected as an artist. Um, and so, you know, we don't think it's wrong for people to, to speak out if they think that something of theirs has been taken from them. Um, but, you know, we also, if it goes beyond that and people start bullying another artist or start making accusations that aren't true or are doing something um, that we feel like it doesn't have the right intentions, then we also have the right to 
moderate our community and make sure that our community is a place that is positive and respectful and and protecting the people that are there for the right reasons yeah and like i do understand that um it's been difficult for people to to get in touch with us about these things um honestly i think a lot of us were kind of of surprise that no one just tried to ask us directly about um, do realize that it's just been really hard to contact us especially in the last couple of months so um that is something that i think us like we as a company are trying to work on opening up channels of communication um making support uh less backlogged unfortunately <laughs> um so so yeah, like we want to talk to you guys. Like we would much prefer if something like this has happened, we would much prefer that you just ask us what happened and we'll look into it and you know, we'll we'll work it out. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. There's two things I wanted to add on to that. First of all, like I don't I never understood why the first thing that people want to do when they come across a problem with high-rise and like higher staff in general is to just post about it. I've never understood that. Like, there's kind of no, you're not really resolving anything by posting about it publicly and getting so many people riled up over it. It's, I think it's much easier to just privately message support or staff, I guess, and just resolve it there. The other thing is that I can tell that you guys are very, very, like, you guys really, truly care for the community because otherwise you would not be here talking to me. Uh, you would have not reached out to me if that were not the case. So I definitely, that's why I strongly believe in you guys and I strongly like look up to you guys as like people who truly care because you guys have gone all this way with all this planning in this past month to talk to me and I mean we've been recording for almost two hours and I can tell that you guys really care and like I said, I said in the beginning and I'll, I'll keep saying it for as like long as I can but I really appreciate it and I'm sure many many people listening appreciate it but um Oh, we love you guys. <laughs> and we, like, I'm really glad that we're having this dialogue and I think we need to do it more. Um, and we do listen and we see what, what people are saying on the app. And so I think sometimes it feels like we're not, uh, because we're not responding or because it's hard to reach us, um, that, that we're not hearing you guys, but we are. And we talk about it all the time, like ways we can do better for you. Um, and so sometimes you know, things aren't perfect, but we are really trying and we're trying to up the the support people that we have on staff and trying to find out ways to have a better dialogue and uh, better systems for supporting you guys. Yeah, because like last week-ish, like Anton made this like Zoom meeting thing where he talked to like content creators and that was like the first time that I was like, not the first time, but that was like one of the first times I was like, wow, like they're really trying and it's really nice to know that like finally you guys are opening up a little bit more <laughs> i mean it's been a long time coming but like <laughs> we really appreciate it and yeah i just think it's really nice it's very very wholesome thing to think about Yay! Yay. <laughs> but to clear stuff up with uh all these accusations stuff let's just like break it down <laughs> and i'll ask first of all um I mean, it's been like a paradoxical paradoxical topic of like, what is truly original? What is not really original? So I guess <laughs> to clear things up, I'll ask, uh, where do you guys find your references? Because I'm sure that many players are looking in the same exact places, but probably aren't really aware of it. So oh, um, we get a lot of our references from Pinterest. Um, Sometimes we just have stuff pinned to a giant board for a while. Um, I know I personally have like a massive, massive board that I just add stuff onto as I'm researching, saving it for like other things. Um, so, so yeah, that's probably the main place. Um, you know, Google searches also, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I agree with. Like, I, I know that I have a board of just stuff that I'm like, oh, that's super cute, or that's really a neat idea, and I'll just throw it in there. The thing comes up, I'll pull from it. But I also like to look at, like, different clothing companies, Dollskill and uh, Topshop and stuff like that to get more influence. And, of course, if I see anything on Instagram or something, I usually 
they'll like save it. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, sometimes we're guilty of sticking too close to our reference. Um, cause you know, sometimes you just find the perfect picture of something yeah. and like, we know, we know that high rise players would love this so much. And so you just make the thing. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> that's where we get our references from. Um, you like, it seems like a coincidence, but when you think about, you know, if you type in like pastel hair to Google, you're going to get the same results. So it, it makes sense that there is often a lot of the same trends going around and the same inspiration that we all are working from. And I would say like, um, it is pretty crazy to me how often these kinds of coincidences or like, you know, kind of great, th great minds think alike sort of situations come up. Um, but part of our job is to notice trends both inside and outside of high rise and like Part of that is that we're actively trying to understand the tastes and preferences of the high-rise community so we can design things that the community will enjoy. So, um, like, we, we do notice when there's, like, similar hairstyles that come up a lot, either um, that everyone is wearing or that come up a lot in grad contests or, um, you know, like, similar... Uh, styles of clothes, um, and like we also share a lot of your interests and tastes. Like a lot of that stuff is stuff that we also just like too. Yeah, I mean, our ultimate goal is to make stuff you guys like, and so we're looking at places that you guys are. Like, we like the same things you like, so that's our goal is to make stuff you guys want. So <laughs> there is going to be some overlap. I think you really would enjoy to have in game. Yeah, and I definitely like understand it could be pretty difficult to find what we all like because like we all have different, very different styles. Like the entire community, we're all different. Like compartmentalize, compartmentalize, compartment, compartmentalize. We're all we all have different styles, <laughs> and like I can understand it could get pretty tough to you know understand what we like. But you guys are, I think you guys are doing a pretty good job of it so far. Like a lot of the grabs this year have been drastically a lot more stuff that we like uh, compared to last year, which is kind of crazy. And um, this isn't totally related to the, the question, but like we have a meeting every two weeks where we review all of our artwork and what's been popular in the game. And so we see trends there of like, oh, there was thousands of people wearing this hair. That means that people like this hairstyle and we're going to make more. And that's one way that we learn what you guys like and, and what we can do in the future. And going back to like criticism and stuff, I know it's <laughs> as a community, it's extremely easy to just like jump to conclusions and see high res as this like unfair, oppressive company that like doesn't ever listen to its players, etc. Which uh, obviously you guys are proving wrong right now. Um, so since there's a lot more players like jumping onto like this bandwagon lately. Like, is there, how does all this criticism like affect you or does it at all? I'd say that like, we do welcome constructive criticism because you know, there's always, we know that there's always things that can be improved. Um, but kind of like the ranting and bandwagoning and like the, like the really strong negativity is pretty draining. Mm. Um, you know, especially opening the app and going on explore and everything is just people like angry and hurt and yelling. That's, that's not a great feeling to see that. Yeah. Cause I've always, I've always said this, like there's a difference between like criticism, like actual like constructive criticism. And then there's the difference between that and like actually just being hurtful and like mean. And a lot of people in high unfortunately, don't understand that difference. I think it's easier uh, for, like, artists to understand, especially because, like, criticism is what makes us improve, and it's what we ask for if we, like, want to make changes to our art and stuff, but a lot of people don't understand that criticism is not the same thing <laughs> as a construct constructive criticism isn't the same thing as just, like, ranting and just being, like, angry. It's- I, I definitely understand, like, how you guys might feel because 
I also go and explore and I'm just like, what the heck am I looking at? Like, why am I looking at this? There's so much like hate and like, it's just not something that we should be welcoming, I guess. Like, I understand if people want to like speak their opinion and stuff, because obviously I very much, uh, what's it called? I very much encourage like speaking your opinion and stuff, but there's like a difference, you know? I've always noticed that. A lot of times players forget that we're people and we love to hear from you guys. We like to see what you guys enjoy. We like to see what's going on in the community. And don't be afraid to like, just want to talk to us, ask us questions about things before, you know, you get angry and start posting things, you know, how dare they do this to us? Honestly, we would love to talk to you guys. We'd love to explain things. If something comes up similar, you know, we show our references if we need to. We, we just want to talk with you guys and have like an open dialogue about things that you know, we're doing what we can to make the community great for you guys. And that's our goal. So just be aware that we are open to you guys saying, hey, you know, let's talk about it. Let's investigate. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, it's definitely not like a one way street. Like it should go two ways to like. So uh, I don't really know how to explain this. Like if we want to improve as a community, Oh yeah, I should focus more on like how is as the community, like community and staff should be focusing more on tackling problem problems that we're all going through versus like having this dichotomy between players and staff. Like it shouldn't it shouldn't be just players versus staff. It should just be like all of us together at a specific problem, which is very nice that like we're starting to talk about this because like like I said when earlier when I was talking about the meeting with Anton, that's kind of when I realized like, okay, we're going in the right direction because we're working with, we're finally like talking to staff and we're finally kind of sort of working together like towards a solution to all of this like crazy mess. So yeah, it's just nice to be able to get through this like all together instead of like always clashing heads, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I definitely agree. You know, we're a community, even the staff, we're, we're part of the community as well. So it's nice to see us come together instead of, you know, clashing, like you said. So hopefully in the future, that'll be more of a group coming together, and being a strong community versus at, you know, each other's throats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, a collaboration, really. Yeah, because like all in all, if you guys didn't truly care about the community, like, why would you still be, like, working here? Why would you be talking to me right now, you know? So, I think I'm really glad that we're doing this episode. I'm really hoping that people will understand your guys' intentions by the end of this and will understand that we're all in this together and we're all trying our best <laughs> to get through it together. Yeah, one thing, like, Anton said to me also was, it's actually great when people uh, when people are angry but it just it's a sign that they care about something that we made and so it's from our perspective at least on the bright side this means a lot to people and we realize that um and so i think it's good that people are passionate about it because it, it means that we've created something that that they care about and so we're just trying to make that better like there's this person in our meeting who is like we're only like getting angry because we love this game we love you guys and i'm just like oh, <laughs> that's true <laughs> we only get upset because we want it to improve and we want it to thrive yeah, and it's really heartwarming to realize that something that we've made is so important to people oh definitely oh my gosh it's high is like ridiculously important to me and i've only been on it for two years or something like I can't even like begin to explain how Hyrus has like genuinely changed my life, like my real life. You know, I don't really mention it a lot. Like it really has, and it's crazy. That's why I was so nervous when I was first talking to you guys, because I was like, I am talking to the people who like changed, like, uh, what's it called? Like indirectly changed my life. Like, <laughs> it's so weird. Well, that's know, so sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> It's embarrassing because I hate like admitting sappy stuff like that, but like it's true. Like, <laughs> you know, it, it's great to hear that. And honestly, I think like one of the things that drives me as an artist is just wanting to, like, leave my mark on the world and to actually, to, and like to actually hear that yeah, something I drew has affected someone in a positive way is great. Uh, one last thing, kind of in this same topic, is. 
Uh, I mean, you guys kind of already said like it's kind of an ongoing thing, but do people still bother you about these accusations? Because I kind of want to shed some light on how people might still be making these accusations and by, might be still making all these like rude comments and stuff. Do people still do that? Because yeah, I think it's not going to just go away. Yeah. Um, but I think the more that we are open about it and have a dialogue, the more people will understand uh, our side and the more that we can understand the player's side. And I think it will get better. And it's already, we've already started doing a better job at communicating. So if you're listening to this and you're just like, maybe possibly rethinking about the things that you had to say, that's great because I, I mean, I personally would really also love to see Harry's improve on like, it's not just you guys that are like part of the problem. It's, it's us too. Like we're, we're also part of the problem. We're all are, we all are. So I've always wanted to like encourage people, like you can leave criticism without like bashing people. That's kind of the end message that I've wanted to leave on this episode. Like you, you can make criticism, you can criticize things without making it so hateful, you know? So that's yeah. kind of the last thing I want to say. But Try to be constructive about yes. it and work with us to solve the problem. So um, our next topic is kind of more about like health because I know <laughs> if we're if you if we're gonna acknowledge you guys as maybe humans just kidding as we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna I'll acknowledge you guys as humans uh, we should probably uh, not probably we should definitely address health because it's very important to not only you guys but not only us but also you guys so I kind of want to know and I'm probably I probably already know the answer but does working for hires ever like get tiring or do you ever experience like burnout especially if you're full time which I actually didn't expect <laughs> yeah for sure I mean there are some times that like there's different events or sets that we do that can be kind of daunting take a lot out of us and uh sometimes we'll need like a break a couple days to kind of refresh and then it's a good thing that we're constantly doing different because then there's something new that we can work on. It kind of breaks up that block. Um, also, again, the art team is always in contact with each other. So having a rough time, having troubles, uh, it's been great to see like others help pick up Slack or be like, like hey, hey, here's some references. Uh, sometimes uh, I get a set that I'm not really excited about working on, but having the whole team there to help if I need references or if I need like inspiration uh, is a good resource. Would you guys say that you guys are kind of your own, uh, how do I explain this? Would you guys say that the other people on the art team are also like kind of your source of motivation in a sense? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, just being able to like share ideas with each other is really great. And it, like I said before, like we get inspired by each other's work. So, um, you know, just learning from each other is really great too. This is kind of <laughs> one of my questions that I wanted to know. How do you guys, like aside from talking to each other, how are, how do you guys keep yourself motivated, especially during lockdown? Because I know <laughs> because we're in quarantine and stuff, a lot of resources are cut off that like, we could normally enjoy so how the heck do you guys stay motivated how the heck do you guys like pull through all of this especially with all this like recent drama that could be like you know putting you guys down it's like one of the great motivations is just seeing you guys get excited about the stuff we make <laughs> like uh, i mean it's i am still amazed that i have a job where i draw things and people get excited about them like yeah i, yeah, I totally agree with that <laughs> the concept of that is just i don't know it's 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 so hard to just like when you just say it like that it's like oh damn that's that's awesome <laughs> yeah it's pretty rewarding uh, for me like especially <laughs> I mean, I obviously can't relate of like being a full-time artist, but I have this gigantic commission, which I already talked to <laughs> Alka about, like I have this gigantic commission. And like the only thing that's keep keeping you motivated is like s knowing that people will be happy to see it because they've been waiting for so so long for it. 
that's like the only thing and i i definitely relate like i when i make art personally i like feeling that people might like it and i love that it's on such like a big platform for you guys because you have like thousands and thousands of players to get reassurance from and i love that it's so sweet because like yeah of course hires has like its awful moments where we're just like be hateful little gremlins but you know we can be very loving too and we now kind of my next question uh do you guys ever have time to like actually play high rise like uh, participate in like events and economy and stuff because i kind of now that i'm picking up on all of this stuff i'm gonna assume that you don't but you know do you guys ever have time to do any of this not really <laughs> uh, i i used like i used to be a little bit more involved in my crew like i would sometimes pop into the crew chat and talk to people but um but yeah i like i i don't think any of us really have time to actually like compete in the events or um like really get into the whole trading thing um, I only really go on to like change my outfit and explore a little bit and see uh, what's going on on Explore and like what people are wearing and what rooms are popular. But it's never a really intense like eventing or trading or earning gold or anything like that. Yeah, I have to agree to that. Um, I get on daily just to kind of messages. I do try to like respond to players if they have questions. Um, but my main thing is like kind of like a lurker. I'll just get on explore, just like scroll and like all different outfits, posts, and that's about as like it. I don't really you know compete or trade or anything like that. So since like high rise is kind of like a a game where like events are basically out like almost every week and stuff. Do you guys like ever get any breaks? I just thought about this. I don't know why I never wrote this down earlier, but like. Do you guys ever get a break from like designing and stuff? Um. <laughs> uh, well, we do take time off for ourselves, so it is encouraged in our company to, um, like take mental health breaks if you need them. Um, but the the event train doesn't stop. <laughs> I know because I was I was just thinking about it because I was like wait they make events during Christmas and since they plan things out for like the months ahead they still work during Christmas I just, like during Christmas time at least that's what I, I thought of just now and I was just like oh that, that's kind of sad <laughs> well for things like that like big holidays we do get like a you know a big company wide break so um you know Christmas events we're usually like working really hard on those in November so, um, so yeah, we do get a Christmas break, um, and, you know, we'll get, like, we'll get, like, vacation days here and there, um, but, uh, but yeah, like, as for, like, a big break, um, that's kind of on us to take vacation time. So bad. <laughs> you guys yeah. work so hard. Oh my gosh. I could never, like, imagine literally drawing like almost every single day like this oh my gosh <laughs> for like a year that's i never actually talked about this like how much time do you guys get to like devote to your like personal interests and like hobbies because i the the like the reason why i like thought about this question is i remember i forgot who like i forgot who but i saw a video of i know it's one of you guys like one of you guys were doing like the oh my gosh i don't know what's called like the fabric like <laughs> That was me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I knew it was one of you guys. I knew for sure. I, I just want to know, like, do you ever, like, I know for sure you guys have, like, other interests. Like, everyone does. How much time do you get to devote to, like, all your other interests and stuff like that? Um. Well, so, yeah, I, I had posted a video of aerial silks because that's been a hobby of mine the last couple of years. Um, and it's definitely, like, encouraged and super healthy for us to have hobbies outside of work. Like, you just have to. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely, it's challenging and we all work from home. So I think that's been one of the biggest challenges for me is like making sure that your work is a nine to five and then you put it away and you can do something else for yourself. Um, and I think sometimes it's better for that to be something that's completely different, like working out or, uh, like playing board games or something, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's challenging and I think we all have kind of weird schedules because it's flexible. You can work like from 
3 a.m. to noon if you want oh. to, and <laughs> sometimes we do. But uh, yeah, just kind of keeping yourself in check and knowing like it's time to log off and do something else is really important. Yeah, all great at that. And also what's really great about high rise is like perspective. They really, you know, we are really pushed to enjoy our hobbies, to share our hobbies and spend time with our hobbies. So that's been one of the great things about working for high rise. Yeah, definitely. Um, like uh, <laughs> the working from home thing is helpful for some, like more helpful for some, for some hobbies than others. So like my hobby is baking sourdough bread. So um, I actually end up doing that throughout my work day because oh my <laughs> it's one of those things that you like kind of just check up on every so often. So like, so yeah, um, it's not great for my work schedule, but um, <laughs> it, it is nice to have that flexibility and freedom to be able to also focus on things outside of work. Funny, I was literally eating sourdough bread like just this morning. <laughs> <laughs> So my last question for this segment is, do you, can you guys name any like specific or not name like a person, but like, can you name like any inspirations that just keep you pushing through throughout the week? Honestly, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, just the other artists on the team, I think seeing like the work that they're doing is helpful. And, um, for me personally, like I use Instagram a lot, so I follow some artists on there that like their work uh, is really cool and I like to see what they're doing and that inspires me. And then like friends I have that are artists, it's all, uh, it all like helps just to motivate me. This is kind of sappy, but like, I love going on highs and seeing players wear outfit and like things that I've made. And it just makes me like feel good to know that somebody is enjoying it or having a good time or, you know, doing whatever they want to do with it. And so, um, that tends to kind of push me to like keep creating because I know that somebody out there is going to enjoy something that I'm I totally agree. Yeah. Um, plus, um, like in addition to people just wearing the items in high rise, like I love seeing uh, you guys draw each other's avatars and just interpreting our art into your art. It's, it feels a little bit like fan art sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was one of the coolest things when I started working for high rise was like, the way that people are inspired by our art is super cool. So uh, that's a perfect segue to our next like little topic. I just cracked my wrist. That's a perfect segue to our next topic, which is kind of dedicated to like all the artists listening. Because I know like about maybe three ish episodes of mine have been dedicated to like artists and stuff. So. So my first question uh, is, uh, my first question is uh, if there's any plans for like making more artist themed, ev not events, like not events, like events events, I mean like contests and stuff, kind of like the creative challenge thing or like the draw this in your style thing that you guys did like a few weeks ago or something. Are there any more plans for that? Because that was really fun. Even though I didn't participate, it was fun looking at all the entries and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think we're constantly like especially when we're planning things out we are uh talking with renee who's you know doing a lot of the post and community and always trying to think of different ways we can include the artist include the community so we're constantly like if we're pulling themes we're also trying things that we can do for little contests or you know what have you to keep community involved i would love to do more stuff that allows people to be creative without being like uh a, an amazing artist but just people that are creative in other ways um and i don't exactly know what those things are but if people have ideas then they should share them and i like i think we need to do more stuff like that and then um like some of those specific things uh like yeah that would be super fun for us to do like i don't think we've actually thought about doing <clears throat> like a draw this in your style like specifically but yeah i think that would be, that would be fun kind of related to that uh do you guys have any like have any like kind of advice for artists who kind of want to get more noticed and pr keep on pursuing art and do you guys believe that hires is a good platform to do that on um i don't like to be honest i feel like i'm not the most aware of art forums and places that 
you, like artists can grow a following because I, I use Instagram a little bit, but I'm by no means like an art celebrity on there or anything. So I definitely am not the expert on it, but I, I do feel like in general, High Rise is a place where there's a lot of creativity and a lot of support for creative people and a lot of inspiration. And so it seems to me, and I am i don't post like personal art on high rise that often, so I don't know, but it seems to me like it's a great place for people who are exploring art for the first time or who don't have a lot of experience can like really grow and learn from each other and get support. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree a hundred percent with that because I feel like high rise is such like a community to help support and push artists on I see it constantly or you know an artist may be like oh it's not my best work and I love to see the comments under it it's like no this is amazing I love it this is the best it's that's the support that an artist needs to keep on making to keep practicing and keep moving yeah and I think sometimes with like Instagram or or big social media platforms you get a little bit lost and I personally on Instagram feel like it's really hard to compare myself to like those big art moguls who are posting flawless art all the time. And I think having a smaller community of people who are around your same level and uh, who are interested in the same things is like way better than having this giant platform that you aren't necessarily reaching the right audience for. I think also just the, like High Rise is a good place for people to learn because there's kind of a context for it. So you're not just making like whatever art, um, you know, there's stuff to draw inspiration from even within the game itself. So like drawing avatars or drawing, um, like drawing people's avatars or drawing uh, environments and furniture. So, um, so yeah, it's just like, it, it's like an extra la layer of context to help inspire people. Personally, um... The reason why I say how it's kind of changed my life is literally because of this topic. Because I, when I was, like I said, when I was starting art, I literally just did not, <laughs> I was not the best artist in the world. I was very, like, beginner level, and because of high rides, it just, like, helped me improve. And it actually helped me a lot, like, it helped me learn a lot about, like, social media in general and how to, like, network and stuff. Because I met, like, a lot of people who connected me to, like, more people, and, you know, like, the loop just kept on going until eventually I got verified and you know that it just like all how to explain it's all just kind of blasted off from there if that makes any sense so it taught me a lot personally so uh I definitely recommend if any like smaller artists are kind of like listening uh definitely start on high rise I think it's great and yeah <laughs> yeah and I would say one thing that I learned is like when you're starting out don't compare yourself to someone's final product if it's like a professional game artist with 20 years of experience like don't try to be that right away find somebody who is one step ahead of you and work towards that and I think that's what I see a lot on high rise is like a lot of people who are learning from each other and like sharing what they've learned yeah there's um there's a sentiment that um someone told me a while back where um, just on the topic of not comparing yourself, but being okay with where you are in your art journey. Because, like, you know, someone who has a lot of experience is just in a different part of their journey than you are. Another question that I, or another topic that I kind of want to talk about is that it's kind of like this stereotype that, like, artists are underpaid and stuff, and, like, you know, that's starving art artists, like, stereotype thing. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on like changing that stigma, especially on high rise? Because I mean, I don't know if you guys are aware, but like, it's like being underpaid for art on high rise, like as a player, is so common. It's like ridiculously common, <laughs> and a lot of players don't realize that they're being like that they're undercharging. Is that is that a word? If they're undercharging and stuff, do you guys have any like thoughts about that at all? <laughs> Um, well, I think it's, it's a tough issue because it's not specific to high rise. And I think we all can agree as artists that a lot of artists get underpaid 
and it's a problem with happens on any platform. And there's no like perfect answer on how to fix it. Um, but I think it starts with being transparent about what you value yourself as and what you are charging for and um, like trying to be open with the community and saying um, like, don't, don't undersell yourself and this is what I feel like I'm worth and this is what I'm gonna charge. And if you don't wanna pay that, then it's not worth my time. <laughs> preach, preach. <laughs> oh my gosh, more people should learn that because there's I, I can't even like tell you how many like new artists or new players have joined hires and they're like, I'm selling commissions for like 10 G and I'm like, dude, that's like less than like a cent like in real life. Like what? <laughs> I'm just like, please don't do that. Like people need to learn to charge more, like please. <laughs> yeah, I think it's hard with art because people like to do it and it's fun. And so there's people that will do it for free. And so even as like professional artists, there's people that will take your job and do it for nothing. Um, and so it's up to like the, the community to all work together to say that they value something. And so there's probably always gonna be those people that will do it for cheaper, but you have to know like how much your art is worth to you and how much your time is worth to you. And I just, I wanna say that it's like, it's, it's hard being an artist because you also have to be a business person and so just know that like it's not just about being creative and and getting to draw all the time you have to do a lot of work to get to the point where you know what to charge and you have clients that will pay for it um so i think it's like it's very challenging so don't expect if you're like i want to be a professional artist for it just to be drawing all the time definitely makes sense especially because I've had like friends who've been like, how do you charge money, like real money for commissions? Like people always ask, not always, but like my friends have always asked me that. And I'm just like, dude, I don't know. But like being, <laughs> being on hire is like kind of helped me learn how to not like bar bargain is not the right word. Like how to negotiate. There you go. How to negotiate with people when it comes to like charging real money <laughs> for my commissions. And that kind of helped boost me into like that world just starting by using high rise gold so i think that's pretty cool i'm like i'm not gonna lie like high rise loki kind of taught me about the economy like in real life as well <laughs> even though like it's literally not like the same thing but like it's weird how there's so many like real life like significance to high rise if that makes any sense that's awesome i never would have expected that that would be something that somebody could get out of it but that makes complete sense well because like because yeah. <laughs> i've always been like super interested in high, rise, high rises economy and how like we get kind of like the depression period and also kind of like the regression period and i was like wait that's like real life <laughs> and so i just did like more research on it and i was like wait that's kind of weird <laughs> so, i mean it's just like a weird tidbit that i've always like been interested in but yeah, there's like real life things to hires, which is really weird because it's a virtual world game. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, <laughs> art imitates life and the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh no, wait, it's been, it's this is kind of our last topic. So, uh, um, personally, making art for video games was always one of my dreams as a kid. I grew up playing video games. All the time i grew up on deviantart like religiously um i grew up on youtube i grew up on all the social media stuff and then making video game art was always like my thing maybe not for high rise but like just making game art in general was always my dream and it could easily be others as well like as you said like you kind of don't really realize this is a thing before people expose you to it and uh if you're listening i'm now exposing you to it <laughs> we're now exposing you to it it's a real thing that you can actually like have a career in so what is some advice that you would like to give artists who kind of want to get into like the same kind of game development thing that you guys are in right now um is their style like you know that they're worried about their style and you know that's something that i mean like i can't speak for the other artists but i know when i was a young artist that's also something i worried a lot about too and as I've learned in my artistic journey, 
Um, that's not really something you need to worry about so much, especially if you want to be a professional. Um, so, like, don't worry too much about actively developing a style, because, like, if there's a certain look you want to achieve, that's fine. Um, if there's, like, other artists that you admire and you enjoy the way that they put marks down on paper or, I guess, on screen nowadays, um, and you want to incorporate that into your work, that's fine. But your style is is a natural fusion of your influences and your tastes and your knowledge and skills and like literally just the way you physically interact with your tools and that's going to change and grow over time um as a professional artist um you know some people are sought after because they have a recognizable style but i would say most of the time uh people are expected to be able to work in multiple styles so um like for example if you know, unless you're part of a game or an animation project from the very, very early start and, you know, you're helping to develop the look and all the concepts, it's more likely that you're going to have to adapt to an existing style, just like for, like, us at High Rise. So, um, like, what's more important is just developing, like, your fundamental skills and being able to apply that to lots of different challenges. I was gonna say um, something similar is try different like subjects don't just stick to one thing like if you draw you know humans really great that's awesome but maybe try a landscape try building like a, you know an environment just variety is a lot of times a great thing that way you can show you can do a lot I know myself and like other artists who like their dream was to be a concept and that's what they were going for but afraid to like try new things try different techniques be different <laughs> yeah definitely like there's a lot of different jobs within the game industry there's like a lot of different things that go into making a game <clears throat> or like making and making like an animated film or animated show so um yeah like you don't always just have to be like the artist uh, i think that's both of what you guys said was super good advice and I would completely agree. I think like a big thing is just knowing the fundamentals, um, like form and perspective and how to render material or how to draw certain things. Like that's, that's the first step for sure. Um, yeah. And I think like practically, um, having a portfolio that represents your work is, uh, like, like we said with the, how we hire artists that's a big first step um so like if you want to work at a certain studio or if you have identified a job that you want looking at other people's portfolios in that same field or looking at portfolios of the artists that work at that studio and trying to emulate that in your own work is like one really practical way of going about it i don't that's not the like direction that everybody wants to go some people probably do freelance work or people like maybe do fine art or sell their work in different ways. But that's like, if you like, for example, specifically want to work at a game studio, that's what I would recommend is like working on that portfolio and getting that to represent you and, and be polished. <laughs> that just gave me an idea that, that we should do like portfolio reviews sometime. Oh yeah. That could be a fun little project for us. I never really like recognized how important a portfolio was. Like my art teacher used to say, like portfolio is everything. Like it, it could get you to like all these like art opportunities. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And like now that I hear it, I'm like, okay, yeah, he was right. Um, <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that important. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah uh, oh, as the, I had somebody give me advice that like what you should do is get your portfolio in front of as many people as possible. Um, and that's what I did for, so I, I'm kind of just speaking from my own experience, but that's what I did for like a while um, was just show it to a bunch of people who were professionals and hear what they had to say, whether they were hiring or not. It, just having people look at it and tell you like, this is professional level or this is what you need to do to get to a professional level is really important if you um, want to work as a professional in the, the game industry, at least. Don't be afraid to like contact us or talk to us. We're humans, we promise. It might be a little bit awkward, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do love hearing from you guys.
No, like, honestly, I'll, I'm, like, talking to the, like, listener right now, I thought I was going to be super awkward around all of these three, but, like, honestly, this is one of the most, like, enlightening things I've probably ever done this year, at least, and they're, they're, they're humans for the most part, you know, like, talk to them, they're, they're fun, I'm not gonna lie, like, you guys are so fun to talk to, even though, like, we touched a lot of, like, serious stuff, or, like, like, touched a lot of, like, things that people have wanted to know, like, it was just really fun, work, like, working with you guys, that's weird to say, it was really fun talking to you guys, and, yeah. Thank <laughs> so much for having us. Yeah, this was really fun, and I'm, I'm really glad that we got the opportunity to share this kind of stuff with you because we talk about it a lot amongst ourselves and i think that we just haven't found a good way to talk about it with the community so i'm glad that it's happening and i think it should definitely happen more oh <laughs> i'm really honored i'm not gonna lie like I, I would not i did not expect myself to be in this position i was like i'm gonna make this silly podcast i'm just gonna record it with my friends and then like now i'm here um <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect it, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity, so yay! <laughs> you guys, do you guys have any, like, shoutouts or, like, self-promos or anything? Like, any, like, super, super final words? <laughs> I'm playing BR. You can just, you know, follow me, and I'll follow you back. You can message me. I try to answer back. <laughs> uh, yeah. On high rise, I am Alka. I will- I may not follow you back because I-, I just, I do get a lot of follows, so, um, but, you know, if you message me, I will try to respond, um, might not get back to you right away, but try my best, um, I guess, like, outside of High Rise, you know, if you guys want to see more of, um, like, more of my work, because I don't really post a lot of personal work on High Rise, um, my Instagram is, uh, Anko Squared. Um, so, you know, feel free to follow me there. There is an alka.highrise account on Instagram, which is me, but I don't use that. So, oh. uh, yeah, don't, don't follow that one. <laughs> um, yeah, and my na username on High Rise is Anman, and you can reach out to me. I will be honest that I'm not the best at, like, maintaining that account and checking my messages and stuff. So I'll try to respond, but I, I want you guys to know that, like, uh, yeah, I'm here and I want to have more dialogue. Uh, and I'm also on Instagram as Anne Manley, which is, um, yeah, my Instagram account where I share personal stuff and you can reach out to me there. It might be, uh, yeah, that may be another channel. Oh, oh, wow, this is bittersweet. But unfortunately, this is the end of the episode. We really just uh, asked and answered 40 questions. Um, <laughs> that was a lot. But yeah, this is the end, and of course, I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Of course, it's a really amazing opportunity. Like I said, like a billion times, like you're probably tired of it by now, but like it's an amazing opportunity, and I'm really grateful to have you guys here. And of course, to everyone listening, thank you so much for supporting this podcast, even though I know it's been like a month since I released one, but you know, I'm coming back in with a bang. So <laughs> uh, thanks so much for listening, and yeah, that's it. A uh, new episode, I don't even know when. One, one day, new episode one day. And yeah, that's it. Oh my gosh, goodbye. We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we survived. Then